Motion lighting in the bathroom is one of the most basic starter home automations, but it has its problems. If you sit too long, the lights are going to turn off on you and it doesn't take too many times waving your hands like a crazy person to think there must be a better way. Well, there is, and we're going to show it to you. Hey, this is Pete the Hubitat Hub Whisperer here helping you make the most of your elevated home. Today we're fixing the bathroom motion lighting by adding a contact sensor to the door. With this, the hub can know if the bathroom is occupied or not. Of course, this does presume that you actually shut the bathroom door when you use it. Seems like a safe assumption, but who knows. Once we install this, we're going to write a rule that uses motion as a trigger to turn the bathroom light on. Then when the motion stops, it is going to check to see if the bathroom door is open or closed using this new contact sensor. If it's closed, that means we're probably still in there, so we'll leave the light on until the door opens. If the door is open, more than likely that means we've left the bathroom, or Norman Bates stuck in and stabbed us in the shower. Either way, there's no need for the lights on anymore, so the lights will turn off. As a little bonus, you'll see this bathroom has an LED strip underneath the vanity. So we're going to enhance this rule by saying when the rule is triggered in the day or in the evening, the lights and the strip are going to turn on as normal. But in the middle of the night when we don't want to be blinded by the big lights, only the LED strip under the vanity is going to turn on, and only at a very low, low level. Just enough so that we uh, don't miss our target. Now this type of conditional action goes beyond the scope of the basic rules app, so we'll need to build this in either the room lighting app or the rule machine app. And since I'm feeling generous today, let's show you both. The devices we're working with here are a Centralite Zigbee motion sensor, a Centralite Zigbee contact sensor on the door, a TP-Link Casa switch for the overhead lights, and a Philips Hue light strip under the vanity. Let's start by automating this using the room lighting app. So we're gonna start by showing you the room lighting app. We're gonna go into our hub. We'll open up the room lighting app right here. Create a new room lighting app. And then we need to select our devices to automate. This is our basement bathroom. Again, we've got the two lights right there. So we'll select those. So we're gonna add a little bit of a wrinkle because we want these lights to turn on at different levels in a couple different modes. So we're actually gonna set up lighting periods right here and we're going to use hub modes modes we're going to use our day evening and our sleepy time mode so we hit that and you'll see that each of these modes has their own section that we can control what the lights are going to do in that time uh, we'll start with the day mode day and evening are going to be the same actually uh, so this type is a ct which is the color temperature led for day and evening we're going to set the level for that to come on at 80% during those times and the color temperature is going to match the color temperature of our light bulbs in that room which is 5000 K there so what we're saying right here is that when this is activated during the day the basement LED lights are going to turn on at 80% with 5000 Kelvin color temperature and the basement bathroom light which is just on a switch that switch will turn on we're going to match that here in the evening so do a quick jump cut there. So you see these are going to be the same. It's the sleepy time mode when you're coming in there super late at night. You don't want the lights blaring. That we're actually going to change the settings here. Bathroom light is not going to come on. That will stay off. And we're just going to turn the LEDs under the vanity to a red color, which is easy on the eyes. So that's an RGB type. And then we're going to select the level is going to be at 40%. And our color is going to be at red so it's going to turn a red when you're coming in for your midnight bathroom run right there so we're done setting up what the lights are going to do now we need to set our means to activate which is the motion sensor we talked about so we'll select when motion becomes active we're going to select that basement bathroom motion sensor right there and finally we need to select the means to turn off the bathroom lights so here's where that added variable comes in of the door being opened or closed. So automatically room light sets it so that when the motion sensors become inactive, the lights are going to turn off after a minute. What we want to do is add an option here and we're going to limit turning off the lights under certain conditions. And that condition is when the contact is closed. So when the door is closed and we'll select our basement bathroom door, it is not going to turn off the lights. So we're done with those options right there. Now, I don't really think we need to delay here. I'm gonna turn this to zero. Make sure you don't leave this blank. Uh, if you don't wanna delay for motion to stop for the lights to turn off, just make sure you put a zero and don't leave that blank. So we're done with our means to turn off right here. And that, my friends, with room lighting is really all you have to do to add that extra layer of complexity. 
Again, your motion sensors are gonna turn on when motion is active, and then it's gonna turn off when inactive, but only when the contact sensors are not closed, or AKA when they are open. So that's it for setting it up in room lighting. It's a pretty straightforward process once you kind of understand the room lighting app. Uh, you can also do this in Rule Machine. So let's show you how that's done right now. So we'll click on the Rule Machine app. We're gonna create a new rule. We'll name it our Basement Bathroom Motion Lights Rule. And here we are in Rule Machine. Now all rules in Rule Machine are based on trigger events. Nothing happens without the trigger event. That's how what kicks off the rule. That's what gets everything started. So we're gonna select our trigger event, which of course is motion being detected in the bathroom. So we're gonna go down here, we're gonna select motion. That's our basement bathroom motion sensor. We'll select that. When it reports active, that is our trigger event. So what actions do we want to run? So the first action is we want to turn on the light. We're gonna control a switch. Your turn switch is on off. Turn on the basement bathroom light. And we're done with that action. We also want to turn on that LED light to a certain level. So we'll select dimmers and bulbs. Set the color temperature right here for our basement LED. We're gonna set that to 5,000, which is again, color temperature that matches the light bulbs and we had that at 80%. So when the trigger event hits, it's gonna turn on the basement bathroom light and then it's gonna set the color temperature of our strip to 5,000 at 80%. Now, our next action, we're gonna wait until motion stops being detected. So that is a wait. And we're gonna wait for a vent. And that event is a motion event. Select our sensor again. That's the basement bathroom motion sensor. When it reports inactive. So we're done with that wait event We're done with all wait events so it's going to wait for the motion to be inactive and then here's where we're going to get a conditional rule because we want it to turn off if the bathroom door is open or we want it to stay on if it is closed meaning we're still in the bathroom so we're going to select a conditional action here this is an if then expression so we're going to see a new condition and that is a contact sensor. This is our basement bathroom door contact sensor. So if the contact is open, so we're done with if then expression, then turn off the lights. Control switches, select action, turn switches on and off. And we want these both off. The LED can act as a switch or a dimmer. The switch in this case, we just want to turn it off. So we're make sure that's toggled to off and we're done with our actions right there. So if the bathroom contract door is open, then turn off the bathroom light. Now we need to add an else if for if the bathroom door is closed. So we need to create a new action here. It's a conditional action. We're gonna say else if. And again, we're at a new condition which is the contact sensor again, but this time when the contact sensor is closed. So we're done with that condition. So else if the basement bathroom door is closed, then if it's closed, we don't wanna turn the light off right away. What we're gonna do is wait for the door to open. So again, this is a wait and we're gonna wait for a vent. It's for a contact sensor to open. That is open, so we're done with the wait event. Then after that wait, we're gonna turn the lights off. Control switches, turn switches off. And again, these are the same switches right here. We're done with that. And that ends our conditional actions right here. So we need to add the end if at the end of it. So that sandwiches our little if conditional action right there. With that, we are done with our actions. Now the actions we have here for this rule with both lights turning on are what we want for the day and evening modes, but just like we did in the room lighting app, we want only the LED lights to turn on during sleepy time mode. This can be done with one rule and rule machine by having conditional actions inside of conditional actions, and I'll show you a screenshot of that here, but personally, 
I find it easier to just create separate rules for the day evening mode lighting and another separate rule for the sleepy time mode lighting. In order for us to ensure that these two rules only trigger during the modes we want, we're going to add a required expression. Required expressions are optional, but when they are turned on, they act as a restriction, so the rule will only trigger if that expression is true. So let's show you how we do that with this rule. We're going to toggle this on. Now we'll define the expression element. This is a new condition. Select modes. And this rule is for our day evening mode, so select those two modes. Now that's all we want to do, so we're done with our conditions and we are done with our required expression. And that's really all there is to it. So by adding this required expression, what it is doing is saying that even if the basement bathroom motion becomes active, it will only trigger the rule if the hub is in day or evening mode. If the hub is in any other mode, this rule will not trigger even if the motion happens. So that's why we need to create a second rule for sleepy time mode. What you can do is you can actually just clone this rule and then go in and make some edits to that rule and your second rule for sleepy time mode will look like this. Note that the required expression now says the mode must be in sleepy time and the rule will only trigger when motion becomes active while the hub is in sleepy time mode. So there we go. Your bathroom lights are smarter, your spouse is happier, and you can save all the hand waving for waving goodbye, which we're doing right now. Thanks for watching and thanks for elevating your environment with Hubitat Elevation.